Ahoy there, I'm Tiny Pirate. Welcome to a quick tutorial for Life is Feudal Forest Village. Today we're going to look at how to survive your first year. Because believe it or not, the, this might be quite tricky. You, you are likely to die a lot. So first of all, in your first new game, I suggest changing the relief to planes. It's going to make things a lot easier. And that's important. Uh, a normal map size, why not? Uh, you might want to regenerate a couple of times till you see there's not too many hills around you just to make things a bit easier and then crack on if you're really feeling weak and wussy then turn off disasters disasters are kind of fun leave them on now the first thing you want to do when you get in game is to press that space bar to pause so that you can have a bit of a look around and, and see what you're dealing with you don't want time to drag on uh, time is the enemy in this game because winter is coming as they say of course just like in the tutorial the first thing you have to worry about is housing for your peasants so you have one peasant without a home and you want to try and resolve that fairly promptly i would very much advise against building any kind of terraforming or doing anything involving terraforming at the start next thing you want to do is pull up the people profession manager here you need to keep an eye on this and you'll find yourself adjusting this quite frequently because that's where uh, you will find new citizens pop up and you can see the spare ones and your, your general people will be easier to manage with that window open. With this house up and running, you could immediately try and upgrade it, but doing so generally results in a fairly unhappy uh, people because someone will be left out in the cold and they may die from that. The thing you want to do instead is to find a spot and look at putting down a field and you want to get onto this as soon as you possibly can because if you leave it too late your field will not have enough time to mature and you won't get any crops so i've done a bit of calculation and testing and i found that 16 by 16 is a pretty much the optimal size uh, 16 by 16 is a field that can be worked by two farmers and no more than that if it gets any bigger then it gets up to being a three farmer job and i think that's a bit too much at the start of the game you also want to probably throw down an orchard since they're a fairly easy investment and uh, they, they don't take a lot of work to maintain and will continue to grow food for you quite happily. Now in my testing, 14 by 18 gives you the maximum fruit trees for only one peasant working, which is a very nice thing to have going for you. One peasant working means you'll get uh, fruit pretty much year round well in autumn and it'll kind of look after itself more than the normal field will once you've got your farms up and running it's a good idea to put down a fishing lodge now where you put your fishing lodge does actually matter because if you have your fishing lodge close into kind of shallow waters you just and you'll see them because the shallow waters tend to be i'll see if i can spot any they tend to be a little paler than the sea then you will basically not get as many fish as far as i can tell so you want a good spread of fish around your fisherman's lodge but you don't want your fisherman's lodge so far away that it takes your people a long time to get to and from it that that's really counterproductive so in this case i have a bit of trouble because the spots off to the side here in my opinion are quite a long way away from the village and that means a lot of walking and that's a lot of inefficient wasted time so i'm going to put my fishing shed right next to the village give them the least amount of time wandering around they'll go to and from the warehouse pretty happily uh, and uh, I don't want them to be uh, taking forever to do that and a fisherman's lodge is a great spot for your people to work on because as you pick up new peasants you can find that they will be ready to go and work quite freely and you can soak up spare labor that way now see I've got the first of the farms up two people straight into it is what I want and I'm going to put them on potatoes, just like in the tutorial, because potatoes are something your people can get cracking on without having to process in any way. With the fisherman's village up, assign any spare workers to it. It's a great place for them just to keep the food topped up. So right now I've got a few spare, so off they go to do fishing. The orchard only gives you the option of choosing apples to start with, but yeah, that's not bad. They, they're quite, quite good and give your people lots of variety. As you'll see, we have a four by three arrangement of trees, and that's the maximum that one individual farmer can work. And so now we have three people farming and three people fishing. If we did nothing else, they would probably quite happily survive making food this way. 
The other thing you need to consider is firewood, which is kept in the barn. And as you can see, we've got 300 pieces of it. Without firewood, your people will not cook. And you can see in each of their sheds, they are generally holding a bit of firewood. Without the ability to cook their food, they will not eat and they will starve. To make firewood, you need to come here under the resourcing area and choose a lumberjack's lodge. That's not entirely obvious. I would then place that really close to the uh, warehouse so that wood can be immediately processed. And I would make sure that you have someone working that fairly often. If you find one of your buildings has a little Z icon on it, it's probably because there aren't enough current resources. As you just saw there, the logs went up. To get more resources, I used the gather and I use the gather all because I generally do want a bit of stone and other stuff. But you can just use the tree icon to pick up a few more logs. Early on, clear felling seems to be a bit more useful than sending out a forester to do sort of growing and farming. So do consider using that. Uh, feature to pick up the resources you need and you can keep an eye on them in the window at the top or in the barn and warehouse. Now that you have a lumberjack's lodge, it's time to set up the firewood production. Resource limits are quite useful in this game. You don't want 5,000 firewood. You don't want them burning through all of your uh, wood just to make firewood. So I find a limit of about 400 is a good figure. And you generally want someone working on the firewood problem pretty much all the time because if they run out in winter, then everyone's gonna die due to a lack of food or being able, unable to cook, or they're going to end up uh, freezing to death in the cold. About this time, you might wanna think about putting up a hunter's lodge. A hunter's lodge could be placed way out in the woods surrounded by animals, but you probably wanna place it relatively near to your farming area because later on, your hunters are going to protect your uh, chickens and other livestock from being eaten by bears and what have you. So put it near your farms. If it covers a bit of the village and a bit of your farms, that's not a problem. One of the things you can do to speed up construction is to grab hold of one of your peasants and walk them over to the location that you're interested in building and have them just sit here smacking on it with the build button and honking the horn with the one button. It does take a while, but if no one seems to be obeying your orders, this is an effective way to get something built. Just is kind of time consuming. Honking the horn does seem to somewhat speed up the build process. At least the times between clicks does seem to go down a little bit. So keep an eye on that blue marker and when you have the opportunity, honk the horn. Look, building lodge is complete. I find the Huntsman's Lodge is useful when you have spare people and you notice a number of animals hanging around the area. You can use it to just cull the animals, especially if you build chicken coops later on. And as long as it's not too far away from your village, then the amount of food produced will not be insignificant. If you put your hunting lodge a long way away from the village, then the travel time for the peasants to the nearest uh, barn becomes quite extreme. And I'm not really sure that's an efficient use of the use of your people's time in the early game. The other thing to consider is paths. It's pretty straightforward to throw down a dirt path and it won't take your people too long. And you will see a speed benefit from when they use paths. Just be conscious that it can be quite time consuming for your peasants to build a lot of paths. And so I would pretty much only run them to your major production centers. Down to the Fisherman's Wharf is probably a good idea, likewise over to your farming area. Once you are securely provided for with food, it's probably a good idea to throw up another one of the nicer houses. You're probably running a little low on resources at this point. So it's probably a good idea to check how much of everything your uh, new house needs and to make sure you've got enough of it. If you're a little bit low, just grab the harvest all resources button, find a little bit of land and set it to be cleared. You will probably have to take people off their food production duties to get on with the building at this point. Do be conscious of what impact that has on your food stocks. Note when you see this symbol here over the lumberjack's lodge, you have hit your maximum capacity for firewood. I'm not quite sure what the lumberjack does when the capacity limit is hit. As you can see up here, 405 firewood. Generally, I micro that a little bit myself and send them off to do something else useful. Maybe hunting or gathering fish. You can check on the progress of your fields at any time by clicking on them. As you can see there, 784 is the kind of maximum value you have to hit before your field can be harvested. At present, for me, it is summer, so it looks like they will be able to hit that without any problem. If you wait too long in the year before you put your fields down, 
they won't hit that and your fields are likely to freeze where they lie and all your people's time is wasted and all the food is wasted as well. Don't really have to worry about that with the apples. They will just grow. It will take them a couple of years to, to get up to size before they start producing and you will have a farmer tending them during that time. My field is now currently being harvested and you can see the number here is starting to go down and you can see the number of potatoes here climbing and falling and the stocks in the, in the warehouse growing. Once your first house is constructed, do consider immediately going for an upgrade. You'll see that you're probably short of a few items. Don't worry about that. Just tell them to get on with it and make sure you have some set for gathering. So in this case, I definitely know that trees are a bit of an issue. So I'm going to make sure that I harvest a few or set them to be harvested pretty much straight away. You're going to end up with a, a bit of a clear cut area around your village. And that's just going to have to be how it is for now. Because this house is currently showing me asleep, there's no resources for production. I've turned off all of my builders and I look, it looks like they're currently out there pulling down resources for me, which is great. They will eventually stock the small house up to the size it needs. In this case, it needs a lot of logs and then the construction and it needs a bit of stone and then the construction will begin. One of the helpful things that the game offers is as you drag your mouse over an area, in this case I'm looking for stone, it tells you how many stone you're going to collect. So you don't necessarily have to worry about over collecting and wasting your people's time. It looks like this house is just about ready to go. It needs a bit more stone and a bit more wood and then we'll be ready to grow our second story. Okay, our field is currently showing the cold icon. Weather is turning bad for the year. I can see that it is fall and it won't be too long before this field freezes over. Hopefully they will get most of it pulled out of the ground before that happens. If I could have, I probably would have put the field a little bit closer just to reduce the amount of walk times they have. I mean, if you look at the amount of time they spend actually harvesting, not very long, walking takes up quite a bit. Make sure you keep your farmers always at the maximum level. I can't really see a point in ever letting that drop below this, below the maximum recommended during the growing season. Okay, the house is ready to grow and to be upgraded. So I'm going to throw some spare people into it now and the resource harvesting can slow down and I will put everyone else back into food production. Here it comes, nice and quick now that all the resources are available. You will find that if you don't have enough room for your people to grow into, then babies get kicked out of the house and you'll get a little alert down here that child died due to sort of lack of somewhere to live. I think they grow up to be an adult and as soon as they grow up to be an adult, they need a house. And if they don't have a house, then they may expire. This feature could change and release. It seems a little annoying to have that immediately punish you so hard when there's no easy way to tell if you've hit your maximum occupancy for the village, except by going through and counting how many people can fit into any one domicile. As winter comes, it's a time to pause the game and to look at your fields. As you can see, this farmer here has nothing to do. They stand around twitching, wasting their time. So you want to come into this field hit pause and let them go do something else. Likewise, the orchard. This farmer has nothing to do. Pause it and you'll find you have a lot of spare people suddenly available. So pull them out of your farming jobs and put them into fishing, put them into hunting. You may even want to consider putting up another fishing lodge nearby so that you can have the uh, extra benefit from a ton of fish coming in over winter. Don't forget to keep an eye on your timber stocks and your kindling stocks. It may be worthwhile now and then to, to up the number of people chopping kindling for you just to make sure that you never really drop below three, 300. If you get below 100, you really have to start worrying. During the course of the game, you may discover disasters. So far, I've had lightning storms set things on fire. The way to fix that problem is to pull everyone off their jobs and then they will rush to the well pull water out of it and throw it on whatever is on fire. So that is a great way to keep your people from uh, being burnt out of house and home. Winter is potentially a good time to gather a number of resources that otherwise you would have people busy farming. So do consider doing a bit of clear cutting and planning where you want to do your, your next year's work. One point to make is that even though it doesn't say so on the professionalist, terraforming is a builder's job. So you can drop down your builders and as you'll see there, increase the number of people working the terraform. But if you watch at 10 times speed how long this takes, I think you'll agree. It's not, it's not likely to be worth it. 
Okay, as soon as early spring comes, keep an eye on that time up here, it's time to unpause your fields and to let them stock back up with farmers. So pull your people out of whatever other useless jobs they were doing and get them into the farming again. Other than that, I've got two hunters, which are producing quite a nice pile of meat for me at present. So I'm quite content with that. In terms of resources, getting very low on logs, so it will eventually be time to let someone uh, be released from any other duties and they can go about their day, uh, probably one of these hunters, and they can go about their day picking up these trees and pulling rocks out of the ground and gathering resources for us. To keep surviving, I suggest you make sure you never let your firewood drop too low. And as your population grows, expand these farms. I think another block of uh, 16 by 16 is probably a good idea. And to grow more potatoes in it, you will need a lot. You'll also need to keep adding to your housing. Can't really stress that enough. Housing becomes a real issue and it will be a bind on your growth if you don't have enough houses. A second fisherman's wharf also might be a good idea in your second year just to ensure that you keep your fish stocks up and it'll keep your people with something to do even if every other job is currently satisfied. One tip is that you can cancel any construction simply by clicking the icon from this home menu here and then clicking on the item you want to see torn down or destroyed. If you've accidentally built or specified a very large area to be terraformed, simply grab this uh, X, click, you won't see any notification except down here you'll have the building is destroyed. That should be enough to get you through your first year and possibly into your second and third year in Forest Village. I leave the rest of it for you to discover and enjoy. And until then, I've been Tiny Pirate. Do consider subscribing and checking out my channel. I think I've got some pretty cool stuff over there. You'll find a Let's Play of Forest Village as well as some other builder survival and creative games. I hope you'll join me. And until then, thanks for watching. Do leave a like, a comment, let me know what you think. Appreciate your feedback. Good night.